Hey guys, Justin here with Moon Acres. I'm out walking around in the woods today and decided I want to make a fire and I want to teach you guys how to make a fire. Today we're going to do a very simple one called an immediate action fire. This is in case uh, someone unexpectedly falls into a creek, somebody's going hypothermic, whatever the case may be, um, you need to get a fire going to now. All right. And so for that, we're going to be moving pretty quickly. With that being said, I want to gather resources that are going to burn quickly and are going to be easy to gather and collect. Um, the trees in the world, we have two different kinds. We have coniferous trees, the kind that bear cones and are evergreen, and we have deciduous trees, the hardwood trees like oaks and maples and stuff like that that lose their leaves um, in the fall and the winter time. Those are harder to identify uh, what's alive or dead on them. They are denser woods and they take more heat. Uh, they have a higher flash point before they catch on fire. Um, there's, there's a lot of reasons why I would choose a coniferous tree over a deciduous tree if I had the option. Sometimes you might not have the option, okay? And so if you don't and all you have is uh, deciduous trees to work with, you're just looking for the little branches that break easily, that when they break, you look in there and it's a good dry brown wood color. If you see yellow or green, that thing is still alive, it's still wet, and it's not gonna catch on fire. But that's what we wanna collect. We're basically getting the first stages of our, our fire. We're getting the tinder and uh, kindling stages, and then we're gonna collect the fuel stages once we've got this thing going. But for right now, we just need to get a whole lot of that stuff. All right, but if you've got the option to use a coniferous tree, an evergreen tree, that's what you wanna to go to first because it's gonna be a lot easier to identify what's alive and what's dead on there. Um, and there, a lot of the branches are gonna have all the different sizes of, of prep that you need for your fire as far as your, your kindling stages go. We have like a pencil lead size, um, kind of all the way smaller down to pencil size and thumb size. And we could take all those branches and break them off very quickly and break them down by section um, in sizes. And so uh, they're nice, neat, organized piles. And then uh, all we'll have to do is get a platform and brace. We want a platform that's gonna keep our fire out of the snow. And uh, to, do, to help with that, we're also gonna dig down to the bare mineral soil. Now, if you have like 20 feet of snow and that's not possible, uh, you're gonna have to make a giant platform, a really thick, sturdy one, that's gonna be able to uh, withstand heat and not burn for a long time and stay on top of that snow, kind of like a raft. Um, but if you can get down to the bare mineral soil, do that and your, your coal base and everything is gonna last uh, much longer than if it burns through your, your base and goes into the, uh, uh, into the snow or something wet like that. So, um, but anyway, that's the stuff that we need to collect and I'm gonna do that real quick. I don't have an assistant today. I've got the uh, camera kind of bungee corded to a tree here. So bear with me. I'm gonna go collect this stuff and um, then you'll just basically watch me break it down. So I'm gonna get a whole bunch of small branches like these and then break it into these like pencil lead size, kind of a uh, smaller pencil size into finger thumb size. And I need to get three times the amount that I think I need. That way, if my first attempt at getting the fire going isn't successful, um, I've already got it right there ready to go and I'm not wasting time or resources. Uh, worst case scenario, or if, if I don't use it, then I've got it for later or I can just throw it on there to help really get a good roaring fire going. Um, so we wanna get, get three times the prep. And when we say that, one times the prep, is about a handful like so. So imagine three times that, it's gonna be about that big of those three different stages that we're breaking down um, our fire firecraft material into, okay? So I've got all this good cedar behind me. I'm gonna go through there like a madman and, and rip as much as that out as I can. I'm gonna collect it. I'm gonna put it on my waterproof poncho so that it's not, it's in a pretty dry state um, so I'm not throwing it in the snow and making it wet and making it harder to light. Uh, so that's important. Protect this stuff as you collect it. The other thing too is this fire works great in dry conditions on a day like today. You can get it to work during wet conditions 
but it's going to take more work and you're going to have to have a, a good tender that's going to burn hot for a long time to help dry that out and bring it to temperature before it hits that flash point. So you need to consider all those things. Also, if it were raining or snowing really bad, I'd make sure to throw up a, uh, a poncho or something to protect us, to protect the fire as we're trying to get it going. And uh, also make sure you're in a good safe location. You're not taking all this time and effort to make a fire underneath of a tree that could possibly fall on you and kill you because that'd be a real bummer when you're trying to roast marshmallows. So um, anyway, here we go. Let me turn the camera so hopefully you can see what is going on. But during training, we used to yell, man in the creek, and that meant go. thorns there we go get out of here Now, if these branches have green on them, do not collect them because um, it's just going to make your effort that much more difficult. Just like vines with thorns on them. Get out of here. All right. Let's get a little bit more. All right, that should be good enough. Let's see. Woo. So you see, you really got to get in there and get all those branches as quick as you can. All right, it's all about economy of motion and uh, not wasting any time collecting this stuff because somebody could be going hypothermic. So let me put the camera down, see how our shot is. Okay, and so we take all those branches that are kind of a mess right now and we bunch them all up. Get out the snow. All right, we're gonna take our poncho and put that down to help us again stay organized and clean. Just take all these guys. And you can see that our real thin stuff is all bunched up together here. You can see that. And that's what we want to start our fire with uh, when we get our tinder going. So that'll be the first bunch. After that, we've got this stuff in the middle. That's going to be our third bunch that we'll break. And then we've got our thicker uh, kind of thumb size, pencil size down here. And that's going to be the last thing we put on there before we start burning actual fuel size, which is going to be uh, kind of like wrist size or give or take there. So all you do, once you got it nice and organized, is break it off into bunches like that. So we've got our first. Second. All right. Come on now. That stuff's a little thicker. So let's sort that out. Here, get this stuff off the end. Also, if you've got good thick gloves, this is the time to wear them. Um, if you have like nice kind of fragile gloves, not so much. Save the, put those away because you're going to tear them up. All right. Let's bring. 
break that down. Okay. Get a little bit more because that's just a little light. Come on now. All right. Boom. All right. I'm good with that. So we got about three times prep there. About three times there. Definitely here. Okay. All right. Last thing we got to do is build a platform because uh, we don't want to just get our fire started on the wet mud, dirt, whatever it is that's on the ground. We need to elevate that like we were talking about earlier. So this firewood that we're going to get, or this wood that we're going to get, so to speak, is not a uh, fire grade quality where it could be rotten it could be punky it could even be a little damp uh all we're looking for really is some height and sturdiness to start our fire on so let's go find some of that real quick and i'll bring it right back here let's see all right so i just found some rotten logs kick those over old rotten out stump we can break that down. There we go. We got about a one foot by one foot platform. And we've got our a uh, little bit bigger than wrist size around uh, brace here. So we set that up just like so. I've got my cotton balls and Vaseline right here ready to go. And I'm going to uh, light them with a metal match. With these cotton balls and Vaseline, make sure you tear them apart. Get it nice, like, uh, hair-like, and fibrous. And that thing's going to light in a whole lot of really bad conditions for you. So, put that here at the base of the hard brace. We'll go ahead and just do two for good measure. Because we want to make sure this thing lights the first time. All right, put that over there. Now, our next step is gonna be the metal match. And you can strike this with the blade of a knife, although keep in mind, that's dulling your knife out. If you have something like an awl, like you see on this US knife, then that's a great tool to use. You could use a file, anything that's got a little bit of an edge on it to uh, create some sparks. When we do this, we wanna face that edge forward because we're shaving those sparks off of there just like we're peeling a potato and the more hard pressure you put in there the more you dig out and the better sparks you're going to get notice i wasn't sitting here doing this and i'm not going like this okay it's a good controlled movement and so that's the other key thing about our platform embrace if you're having a hard time with your metal match then you can set it on there and shoot those sparks right into your tinder so here we go i'm ready to light Boom, that's going. I'm gonna take my first handful, put that down a little bit, and I'm gonna prop it over the brace, uh, perpendicular to the brace, and I'm spreading it out, spreading it out so that the flames can go through there and they can still breathe and they're not getting, uh, they're not smoldering or anything like that. Now, if this was uh, not getting enough oxygen and it seemed like it was smoky and smoldering, that's what the, uh, the brace is for. You lift this up to let a little bit of oxygen in there. But we've got a nice uh, kind of breezy day today, so we're not really having any issue with that. With that being said, it's also kind of blowing some of the heat out of our fire. And if we remember the fire triangle, it's oxygen, heat, and fuel okay we have to have all three of those working together and if uh if we don't it's not going to light or it's going to go out so in the in the arctic or in the cold one of the things we forget about is heat we have to actually build heat up a lot of times because of the cold ambient temperature so the more stuff you put on there the uh more space it has to basically build heat up and get going and if there's a little bit of moisture on there it can also dry it out so sometimes smoke is not a bad thing but we just have to control it with our brace so we see the flames coming through that means our fire is hungry 
So we'll take our next bunch and we're going to put it on there perpendicular to the last and we're going to spread it out so that those flames can get through there. All right, and we're just kind of keeping an eye on that smoke. They say it follows beauty. There we go. And we can lift this up just a little bit and you'll see those flames start just shooting through. All right, now we take our last bunch, which is good and thick. And we're gonna just toss that, boom, all on there, okay? Grab our leftovers, throw that on there, and get anything that's flammable uh, away from the fire in case the wind blows. All right, so that's it. I don't, it took a, a lot longer than it would if this was a real emergency, just because I'm talking you through it and also doing a camera by myself, but you get the idea, you get the steps, okay? And uh, if you follow those basic principles, you will have a successful fire. Um, hopefully it's just for fun and recreation, but if it is an emergency, there you go. Uh, I'm gonna do another video here in a minute about our different kinds of tenders that we can use, some that we might have to improvise and uh, some that we can pack with us, man-made versus natural and uh, all that good stuff. So anyway, there's nothing better than building a fire on a good cold snowy day. I absolutely love it. This is helping me beat the cabin fever because we've had a bunch of ice and snow the last two weeks on top of COVID and everything else. It's, uh, it's been pretty rough. So go outside, have some fun, and enjoy a little bit of cold weather. Um, stay safe and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Hey guys, one thing I forgot to mention is that the, uh, the fire that we just did is just our kindling stages, okay? And you can see it's burning up pretty quick. So at this point, it's enough to get somebody kind of started on what they need for, for feeling a little bit better about life, uh, getting somebody into a, an emergency blanket, uh, drying their, or just getting their wet clothes off, changing their clothes out, all that kind of stuff. Um, but somebody else is going to be have to have to run back out there and grab uh, more fuel size material. Now I'm not hanging out here all day. I'm uh, I am going to go back inside at some point, so I'm not going to get fuel size at this point. But fuel size is going to be you know stuff that's about wrist size around or bigger. Um, we want it to be dry, but once you get a really nice good coal base going, then we can use stuff that's kind of subpar. Uh, but really we're looking for things that are up against the tree that are nice and dead elevated off the ground and aren't aren't wet So you want to go for the driest stuff the for sure uh, Material that's going to catch a catch a good fire for you um, First, but if not don't be afraid to use some of those subpar items. Just know that you have to have a very hot coal base um, You can also use punky wood to to bank a fire at night at the Arctic Survival School in Alaska Our students would have to take big old logs put them on top of the fire and then bury the fire in dirt And in the morning they could dig that dirt back and they'd still have a coal base And that would help them to save their resources if they just use some good tender um or they could even skip tender sometimes and use the uh, kindling stage of like that pencil lead size like we were using today to get that fire going. And now you're saving those resources for a real emergency. Um, but if you're not trying to bank your fire and you want to extinguish it, make sure that you're removing those elements of the fire triangle. Uh, we want to take a stick and spread everything out, dissipate the heat, get things wet, um, and just remove the fuel from the source of the heat and so on and so forth. Um, it's not a good idea to pile snow onto a fire because that could actually bank the coals as well. I've, I've personally done that. One time we built a big old fire underneath a tree that was just heavy laden with snow and all that snow came crashing down on the fire once it warmed up. Uh, we were able to dig it all out and there was our coal base. We were still good to go. Um, but if you're somewhere where forest fire is a hazard or a problem, you do need to keep this under control. A lot of people will say, well, if there's a forest fire, they'll know I'm there and they'll come rescue me. That's not the case. There's forest fires all the time, you know, and who knows if somebody's going to respond to it or not. But the fact is you're going to be running as fast as you can because you're at the epicenter of that. Or uh, you may not even get out of your shelter by the time it burns you up. So we want to be careful about all that stuff. Um, 
that is that is really important and also not burning yourself or getting things too close to the fire to where they fall in and burn up i don't know how many socks and gloves and other articles of clothing i've seen just get get toasted by a fire um, so the rule is it's like the 10 second rule if you can keep your hand close to that fire for 10 seconds then it's a, a safe area to put items because they're not going to burn up if you have to remove your hand uh, before that 10 seconds is up then it could burn up that that item whatever it is you're trying to dry out so um, but anyway again this was immediate action fire maybe someday we'll do a, a good split wood fire and that's what you need to do if it has been um, wet conditions and everything that you can find on the outside is soaking wet you got to get in the heartwood inside of that wood to where it's nice and dry and uh, that takes that's a little bit more labor intensive than this but this immediate action fire works in a pinch man burning the cedar it smells awesome i don't know if it's exactly good for me but it smells really good um but anyway so yeah but know your resources um pack accordingly where you're going and uh, hopefully if you need it it's going to be there for you but practice these skills get out there and do it and, and enjoy getting outside um, there's just nothing more gratifying than building a fire so uh, anyway hope y'all are well we'll see you later bye